What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brunel Jones II, and I'm back with another reaction video. I only did one, and I decided because it was well-received that I'm going to do another. And if you watched the last video, I was reacting as a professional saxophonist to videos of me playing high in high school um, just to see how I progressed. This video, I'm going to be reacting to videos of me in college. In the last one, I did show a video of how I play currently for context, but right now I just want to cut right to it and skip all the bull. If you want to see how I sound now as a saxophonist, there is a playlist of all performance videos of me playing recently. So let's get right to it. All right, so this first video, I was, I think, a sophomore in college. I definitely was a sophomore. I was like 19 or 20 in this video. I can't quite remember. Most of you know me as a tenor saxophonist, but believe it or not, I had a small amount of time in, in college when I was playing alto saxophone. I'll explain a little bit more of that after we listen to this video. Let's check this out. I was doing some smooth jazz stuff right there. But da -da -da -da. Ah, <laughs> I was going for that high note. All right. I could not hit those high notes. <laughs> of course, of course, I had to play the lick because I was goofy. I mean, I'm goofy now. But yeah, you know, when I was doing the last reaction video, I didn't really give myself that much criticism or whatnot. But I think my biggest criticism back then... Um, was as you can hear i obviously had some language and some stuff on my fingers i was playing some stuff but my sound was really thin and that's a, a thing that happens with a lot of alto players a lot of alto sax players have thin sounds or they struggle with actually getting a big sound and that was my thing on alto a kind of cop out for me though is i never really liked alto and so i never really gave it my all as far as developing my sound and so going back to what i was saying earlier the reason why i was on alto um, is because I've always been a tenor player, even when I was playing jazz in high school. But I was playing the school tenor because I couldn't afford my own saxophone, straight up. Never actually owned my own tenor saxophone. So when I got to college, they don't really have school tenor saxophones, at least in my college, right? And so I had to just play alto for the time being until I could afford a tenor. At some point, um, Greg Tardy, who was my teacher, actually... I guess he did end up having a school tenor, just somebody else was using it, and so I was finally able to use it to start getting back on my tenor tone. Once I started playing tenor again, I was like, oh, thank the God, thank God it was a breath of fresh air, but that's why I was playing alto. But yeah, as you can hear in this video, I think my tone is pretty thin on alto, and plus, I was going for those high notes. I was hearing them, I was voicing them, but they just weren't quite coming out. You know, my setup wasn't the best. I think for my t for my age and for what I was going coming from at that time, I think I sounded pretty good because um that was the first year I started taking saxophone lessons. If you remember how I was talking about my uh, you know, development as a saxophonist in the last reaction video, I was talking about how in high school I never had lessons, you know, like a lot of other fortunate kids do. And so I was really just on my own until the year of this recording. So let's go to the next one. Have you checked out my debut album yet? I go from a classic R&B sound like this. You make me feel so brand new. 
sticking to you just like glue. When to a cutting jazz fusion sound like this. To a chill hip hop sound like this. In my debut album, Typewriter, I put blood, sweat, and a lot of tears into this project just to get it to music lovers like you. You can listen in all platforms, including Bandcamp.com, and you can use the link below to buy your limited edition purple vinyl. It's limited edition. Take a listen to my album, and thank you for watching. All right, so this next one is a jazz tune that I composed called Hood Bebop. I think I was also a sophomore during this time. For those of y'all who know me and know my music know that I don't have that many jazz compositions because even though I've developed even though I developed a lot as a jazz musician, I hate using that in college, I don't really play jazz much or I don't make jazz music. I make a lot of fusion type music, R&B type music, right? And so because of school, I had to compose these jazz compositions for classes. I call it hood bebop. And it's a pretty long video, so I'm just going to skip to the middle of the melody. You'll hear some of the melody, and then you'll hear me uh, play over it. I was playing at this bar called Bistro, Bistro at the Bijou in Knoxville. I actually haven't heard this in a long time. Wow. <laughs> But yeah, that's all I'm going to play because this is a very long clip. But yeah, um, I was, uh, now that I remember, it wasn't my sophomore year. It was the summer after my sophomore year. So it was between my sophomore and junior year. Um, this one, I was really playing tenor. Um, this time in my life, I was struggling a lot with mouthpieces. I was also struggling a little bit with mental health as far as I, I was not having a good time in school. And that wasn't because of uh, the people in school. That was because... I wasn't really a fan of music school, even when I was in there. And if you've seen my videos, you've heard all about this. So I'm not going to get into it. But, you know, I was going through a lot of transitions. As far as my sound, you know, I wasn't a fan of my sound uh, in this video at, at the time because I wasn't really comfortable with a lot of mouthpieces. Like, I was trying mouthpieces and reeds. And, you know, I know they always say that tone comes from here and everything. Yes, it does. But... You got to be comfortable, too. And I just wasn't comfortable with my setups. You know, as far as my, my plan, though, like for the age I was, I think it was pretty solid. Um, the My only critique is, uh, about that, though, is I was kind of locked in with certain um, phrases and certain ideas on certain chords. Like some of the chords on this uh, melody, I, I put them on that song because I struggled playing on those chords. And every time I played on those certain chords, I would play the same thing. And, and, and I can kind of hear... I was I was playing the same shapes in some of those parts. So, yeah, that's my critique for that. All right. Next video. This is another video of me on alto. It's kind of it's kind of a funny one because this is a jam session. I don't remember when this was. I think it was 2018, a while back. It's playing alto. Um it's funny because the jam session was advertised as a jazz jam session. Everybody knew it was a jazz jam session. And people, you know, just thought it was a regular jam session. So, People who don't play any type of jazz, they were coming up and playing on the stage, which there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, music is music. So, you know, we'll give everybody a platform to play. But the problem with this video was uh, there was a guitarist who sat in who doesn't play any jazz. And I think he wanted I think he's like, can we play 
some it was some rock song that he wanted to play, but none of us knew it because it's like, bro, we don't play rock music. And so we were like, look, we're just going to play Blue Bossa. Everybody knows Blue Bossa. Here's the changes. We gave him the changes. And he was playing the wrong changes the whole time. And I'm not trying to bag on him or nothing. Like, he doesn't play jazz, so it's not his fault. But it's like, in the recording, man, like, I was trying so hard to just play through it. There, You can just hear all the wrong notes. And you can also see in the left corner of the video the other guitarist who does play jazz was trying to like <laughs> tell was trying to yell across the stage to him what the chord changes were but he was just locked in just playing whatever he wanted i guess <laughs> that video i remember this time in my life though this time in my life i think i was the most comfortable on alto that i've ever been even though i didn't like alto i was finally because i was forced to play it getting a lot more comfortable um with my sound so my sound in this i was definitely pushing you know pushing through the mouthpiece giving it that good air and everything trying to get a nice sound out all that you feel me you dig you Anyways, you can also hear, though, you can hear some of the patterns that they teach you to play in school. You know, I was working out those patterns over those chord changes, and you can hear that in here as I was developing, but also taking some liberties of playing my own stuff. All right, one more video, and this one is a bonus video. If you remember in the last reaction video, I put a bonus video, and you can still watch that. I'm not going to tell you what the bonus video is. No, 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 but you got to watch it yourself. So check this out. So this is a video of me recording my college auditions. I think I was 17 years old in this. You can hear I'm playing Autumn Leaves. I'm just going to skip up ahead because this is also a really long clip. <laughs> Like I said, this is a long clip, so I'm not going to play the whole thing. But musicians specifically, do you ever listen to an old video of yourself playing and just wonder what was going on in your head during that video? Because I sure do. And um, back then, this was before I ever took lessons. So I didn't really know how to play over changes, over chord changes the proper way. But yet in this video, I think I was definitely playing some of the chord changes. Like I was definitely nailing some of those. Now, as somebody who knows all the ways of how to play over chord changes, all the patterns I can use, all the substitutions I can use, I wonder how, as a person who didn't know how to do that, how I was doing that. Was it my ear? Probably. Were there some patterns that I worked out? I don't remember working out a lot of patterns. So it's just crazy to hear, because um, I actually haven't listened to this video in a long time. The funny thing is, when I was getting the videos together, 
to make this reaction video, I accidentally stumbled upon this video deep in my Google Drive. It's not even on my phone. Like, it's in my Google Drive. So I forgot it existed. And, and I was like, oh, yeah, I got to definitely throw this in here. But, yeah, at the time, I didn't know how to properly play over chord changes. That's why if you really look, listen, there are some changes that I just don't play. My tone was, you know... And, eh, you know, I mean, that's what you can expect, I guess, as a teenager. Yeah, the band was holding it down. Shouts out to the band. Um, I think that's Matt on drums, Morell on piano. That's Solomon Smith, who he's now touring with Billie Eilish. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you want me to do another one of these. Um, if you haven't already, go check out the last one. I was reacting to videos of me playing in high school. If you enjoyed this, give it a like. Also follow me on Instagram because I am also an artist. So on Instagram, I post videos of me playing. I, I post a lot of funny content that's gone viral. And I also post when I'm performing next. And you guys got to be on my Instagram so you can see where I'm performing because I do play and I play a lot and I want you all to be there. Make sure you check out all my other stuff. Peace.